<laughs> you look at me and smile, you're right. Radio listeners, fix your mic, please. All right, radio listeners, good morning. And uh, it's five minutes on the hour of 10, and I'm in the studio. Oh, well, I mean, blessed to, to be in the presence of, well, I know him as Calvin, Calvin Brown. <laughs> Grammy, right? Grammy Brown, yeah. Grammy Brown. All right, and he's here to tell us a little about his book. Um, so before we go into the book, tell us a little bit about which one you want to talk about. Calvin Brown. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> Calvin, Calvin Brown, my mother called me Cali. <laughs> and, and, um, and, but a lot of people in the home circle know me as Calvin. Yes. But all my school friends and most people on the island know me as Grammy, mm -hmm. Grammy Brown. But you didn't like that name so much, right? No, because I used to get teased a lot about it. People say yeah. Gramni, Gromo, and you know all kind of fun names, yeah. and so yeah. I I didn't like it. And when I went to Saint 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 Martin, I actually used Calvin. Okay. So everyone in Saint Martin knows me as Calvin, while most people in the station know me as Gravy. Still as handsome as ever. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Calvin, you were originally you were born in Saint Kitts. Saint Kitts. Yeah. So tell us how it was like growing up between the two islands. It was a little different because I used to come to Stacia when I was um, like four or five as far back as I could remember. Mm -hmm. And we used to stay by Auntie Merlin's house, which was across the street. And then my mom, she got m m married to Monty Cotard, who was across the street. <laughs> so we know this Emily Boy. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. So I would see somebody who's like, you Emily Boy. Like, yes. And it's a typical station thing because yes. <laughs> nobody remembers your name. They call you parent. They call you parent. Yes, exactly. Yes. Like when I was married, they, said, they don't remember. They just say you star white. Star white, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So that that yeah, that's a very very station thing. Um, Emily boy, and even in St. Kitts, when I, when I go, because people say I'm looking for Emily boy. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, but fine. Okay. I'm learning the basics of life. You put it on the on the turn around. It's on the other. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So learning the business of life. Um, on the cover, I have a photo of me about a year and a half old yes, learning yeah. to walk, and, and then and a photo of and the then the other photo, know, the Calvin, you know, like right? that's. that face. <laughs> yes, and I'm. And then the older one. That's more or less where the book starts. That's and then me um, underneath how I am right now. That picture was still taken about six months ago. Um, and so the book is learning. So it's my upbringing. Um, the things I learned, all the um, so, values. So the, um, what motivated you to write a book like this? My you mentor, your, your, you know, from yeah. young growing up. Well, when, when when I see when I look around now, you know, most kids are raised with the screen in front of them. From two, three years old, the parent give them the screen to keep them quiet, keep them foc foc focused. Mm -hmm. But what is the content? What content are they actually learning? And if you don't learn these values mm -hmm. and, 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 and and these things that you're going to need when you grow up, mm -hmm. then you grow up and you don't have them. And now you start learning fundamentals as an adult rather than as a child. Okay, but growing up, did you have this in you to write books? What what you wanted to you know you know when you were young, you yeah. want to be a this, you want to be a, a I wanted to be a teacher. Okay, see where I am now. Yeah, I yeah. Have this, I have this in mind. All right, what you really wanted to be in your mind growing up? I think way back I wanted to be a policeman. Oh God. Yeah, I wanted to be a policeman, and then at that fourteen, years, years, yeah. But by the time I was twelve, <laughs> I wanted to be a manager and a businessman. Business man. All right. Okay. And then by fourteen, I said, okay, I also want to be a soldier. And believe it or not, I became a soldier at twenty-two, and then at twenty-three, I passed to go in the police academy in Curacao. Wow. But I got a business opportunity, and I did not go. And so I took a whole different direction, but it was still one of my loves. So at 12 years old, I wrote in the book, my mind got t turned on to business. And yeah, I loved it ever since. And I told that story to the fifth grade class yesterday too. That was the class where my mind got tuned for business. Okay, did you have a mentor? Yes, Uncle Bill. I don't know if you remember him. He's an elderly man from New New York. He came here to actually um, do the Baha'i faith. Yes. 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 So yes. I met him on the beach one day, and he was the first one that told me I was already a mm, mm, manager and a business businessman. Oh, just by speaking with him. Just by speaking he with him. He picked that up from you. Yes, okay. and he told me that the first day that he met me. Wow. And light bulbs just went off in my head, and then we started meeting like every week or every other week. So half of the book is about my interaction with him and the values, that stuff that he taught me. And, and when I had my second inc incident at 16, and I, I spent four nights in jail, mm -mm. he was the one that- That was in it, sir. No, that was him. Yeah, in station, yeah. Yeah, in station. In station, yeah. Well, yeah. that didn't get the <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. And, and so he taught, he taught me now I guess back then it wasn't called you need an anger management training or, or, or but he, he, he taught me with all my talents and all my skill that two places that has immense talents and skills were prisons and cemeteries but prison was avoidable yes. and I spent the rest of my whole life you know avoiding both of them <laughs> so but I had I learned that at a young age all right now what were your biggest my biggest obstacle. I can't say I oh, really. Setbacks. You had any? You know, setbacks? I had setbacks, but they were not the type of setbacks that changed my trajectory. Okay. Because again, at a young age, my mind was already tuned. There's always going to be something in front of you. You have to go around it. You have your left, right. You have over and under, and then you have two. And when none of that can happen, you go in a different direction. But you always have in mind, if you really want to accomplish that, you still come back to it at some point, mm -hmm. when maybe those obstacles are not there. All right. The, the, the title of your book, Learning the Business of Life. So Uncle Bill taught me that business and life was one and the same. Yes. Right? Most people separate them. Right? So if you're good in business, like you will see, let's say, a police of officer. He's law enforcement. He goes out, he picks up the bad guy, da da da, -da. Mm, yeah. But then his kids, <laughs> not that he can give them his mind, but then his kids are getting in trouble. 
So there's a disconnect because all the values that he have, he, he probably did not lead by example for his kids. If you connect them all, the kids really idolize their parents mm -hmm. as their first item. Of course, once they get older, you know, there's the distraction and everybody go away. But if done properly, um, business and you take life and business in the same, you take it home and everyone see you as that person, as a complete person where the two is connected. And I'm an example of that. Right. <laughs> so you wrote this book. So what is the key business life? You know, the lessons you want to read us to get from this book. One, like, so after every story, I have five questions. And the five questions, if you're an adult reading it, you reflect back because the question is you're answering the questions. Okay. And you reflect back as to what values did you teach your kids. So, in, in other words, you're putting yourself in. Right, right. So, you know, the book I am is. Grammy yeah, now. Exactly. Okay. And these are the things that Grammy learned at his age. And I, I ask you, what if you had someone that taught you? those values okay. or what if you had that idea but had no one to help you with those values exactly. and it's for you to now say okay what have I done with my kids mm -hmm. and if I miss my kids because no they're all going to get a mind of their own they're not going to listen to anything I have to say what am I going to do to my grandkids am I going to now that I know better and I'm seeing this reflection I'm going to start talking to my grandkids and telling them about some of the values that I wish someone told me when I was a child. And if you're a teenager, you can look at yourself and say, okay, I'm missing this, I'm missing that, I need to start focusing on this and that. Like I said in the book, I learned at a very young age that I, if I have cash and I want <clears throat> a thing, I have to use the money to get the thing. Mm -hmm. We don't understand that we can't have our cake and eat it too. Exactly. But we all try. <laughs> yes, we try. We try. Yes. <laughs> but I understood that at a young age. So therefore, I rather earn money and save it than just earn it and spend it. Because spending goes very quickly. Earnings takes work. <laughs> so in other words, in writing the book, the, 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 book, the memoirs, it, it, you know, it gave you a lot of reflections. Oh, yeah. You had I, a lot of reflections yeah. going back. I literally you know, you say you rewalk piece of the path. Yes, yes. yes. So, I, I rewalk the path my life going up. And the stories I put in there are very valuable. It's, there is no story that bogs anything down. I speak about going to church. I literally went to every church station I had. And, we, and I read the Watchtower from um, Jehovah's yeah, Witnesses yes. back then. So what was this process like? Um, so I started it writing a, the bullying story because um, now I'm retired and I'm fully retired basically. Wait, before you answer that question, <laughs> sitting down one day, you know, reflecting maybe I don't know, something said, mm, I should write a book. Well, a a guy I met. Um, I know you give you talk about the, 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 the gentleman, right? You know, but he didn't give you pen and paper and tell you. No, you know that. actually, he but never he, wrote a book at all. And, and, exactly. And, and I asked him why he doesn't write a book, and he says, you know, people learn by experience yes. and through blood, sweat, and tears. Right. So whoever he interact with, he share his information, and it's for them to take away from it whatever yes. they want. Right. So he don't want to write a book. Okay. He wants you to experience it. And I did it firsthand and as I detail in the book. Mm -hmm. For me now, I met a guy who said, yeah, you should write a book, and he was working with kids, at risk kids. You always, um, let me put it this way, you know, when you meet people, you, you give them a little info about you growing up, right? Yes, yes. So that maybe is something that motivated you? Yes, so, so when he said he worked with at risk kids, and I wanted to tell my Your story, sto story. Yes. it was a connection. He said, you should write a book. Right. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I decided to write a book, I said, okay, I'm gonna write a paper first, uh, which will be a white paper and get the paper out there so people can, can understand who I am, what it is I wanna talk about. And then I spoke to our other friend because my typing skill is not so good. So, good. Right. so he has an app so I could speak my story and then he run it through the app and the app will type it out. Oh. Right, so I engaged him with that, and he said, you know, listen, just, just take your time, write your stories, and before you know it, you'll have a book instead of just a paper. And so I sat down and I started. I started October 8th after my birthday, and then by December, I had 13, 14 stories. And I was like, okay, 
this is a book. <laughs> and now you choose to dedicate yourself to giving back. Yes, yes. Because that's I have a lot of time on my hands and, and I want to help. And I noticed you're a mentor because, well, I didn't see you, but I'm hearing that you were in a different schools. So you're mentoring to the youth, right? Yes, yes. Why? Why, why are you focusing so much on the youth? Because, because you don't want to give it back like crazy. Okay, we want to have this book that you know, you leave my hand. Because why it, are this, you mentoring to the youth now? This is where it starts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Beanie Man has a song where he said, if you plant violent seeds, you're going to reap a bloody crop. That's right. If we don't want to reap, the, reap those bloody crops, we have to start planting good seeds. And young people look up to us, so we have to lead by example. Okay. And we, we know all the mistakes we made. Okay. We, we know a lot of what does not work. Yes, yeah, we always say we don't want our <laughs> children to... to to do, you know, what, to make the mistake, what right. we went through. And that's why I didn't have a lot of setbacks. Not that I didn't have any, but I didn't have any that set me back so far mm -hmm. that I couldn't come back. And that's because someone taught me a lot of the fundamentals. So the more we expose kids to the good information that we know for a fact, the better off they are and the more we increase their chances to not make some of the mistakes that we So made. in other words, you're trying to mold the mind of the next generation. The next generation, exactly, exactly. Because chance favors the prepared. If they're not prepared, chance doesn't favor them. <laughs> All right, what are some of the skills? Not, not a rough thing, the soft skills you want to focus on developing in the young, the young people. And why is this so crucial? One of it is, is so reading. Physical. Reading. If you can read, you know, they say readers are leaders. Uh -huh. And reading gives you understanding. It gives you a different point of view. Because sometimes you have a conversation and there's a disconnect because of choice of words, attitude, demeanor. But when you read, you consume that information. And if you retain the information you read, it allows you to learn literally anything. Because everything is written on paper. Mm -hmm. You just have to read it. Yes. All right? And then the second thing I learned, which I wrote in the book, um, you don't have to agree with everyone, right? You can agree to disagree or you can disagree and walk away. But you can't go through where you say, I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree. And because you don't agree, it's wrong. No, there's just another opinion. But when you read, you consume so much of your own information mm -hmm. that you have a broader mindset. Mm -hmm. And then it's easy for you to receive from the other person. So what advice do you have for the young people, those who are trying to, you know, um, to in fulfill a purpose in life? In life. Yes. So you have to, your imagination, I write in the book, um, the, the, to, to have success in life and in business is, is imagination. Okay. You must have the imagination and the determination to succeed. Right. Your dreams are yours. Your ambitions are yours. Right. And you have to be persistent, you have to be dedicated, you have to commit yourself to it. Because we, we all achieve what we commit to, right? If you don't commit to something, you're least likely going to achieve it. And if you don't achieve your dreams, then you don't get to achieve them. <laughs> there's, there's no one out there trying to achieve your dream for you. <laughs> Your book for the, for the older folks, like me and for the older folks, yes, for yes, yes, yes. Um, you have to see your children as an extension of you, and 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 some people get conflicted between oh, your father this and your father didn't do this, and you, you. yeah, 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 that's not your child's problem, exactly. This is you and the dad because it takes two, right? You guys made an agreement in one way or the other, and so he walked away from his side of the agreement but your child is still your child and that child is an extension of you and you must see that child as an extension of you all right but and um, children um let me see how to put this the youth who face additional you know challenges in realizing their potential how, how would you you know? again whatever your dreams are you have to imagine you must have that imagination and and in any instant you make the first step Right? Whatever, if you want to be a plumber, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you find out in the community you live who is a plumber and you engage with that plumber. 
Because maybe you can just pick up the pipes, maybe you can hold his bag. But as you get around him, you start learning plumbing skills. Right? right? In my book, I have five ways that increase your chances to succeed. I chose the fifth of the five ways. So for those who buy the book will realize it. And the fifth way was basically you finish high school, you go out in the real world, learn as many different things as you can, and between the one you love the most and the one that you can do best, put them together and make a business. That's actually what I did. And, and I was very successful. And, and, and so at 30, I took four years off, worked with my family, raised my daughter, and then I got bored, and then I went back to work, and then I retired at 52. So that plan worked for, for me, right? <laughs> but I was tuned to do that because I had a focus. I had a five-year plan from the time I was 15 years old, and I've been doing them ever since. Every five years, I make a five-year outlook. A book was not in my last five-year plan, and at the end of the year, I'm coming up to the end of my five-year plan, but I have more books in my, that I'm going to put in my next five-year plan. Right, right. <laughs> but from your readers, what's the, what is the feedback you're getting from the your feed, readers? The feedback is a couple of things. One, it flows, so there's no story bogging it down, which is what I aim to it's do. It's not boring. No, it's you, not boring. You get a little and humor you, in between. Right, and there is oh, yeah. humor, there, there, there is some... You're gonna, you might, you may cry a little bit, oh, but you're gonna laugh. There's a lot of mishaps. I had a dumping mishap. Um, you have to read that one. I'm not gonna say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's like, oh wow, I wish, I wish someone had 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 basically took me under their wing, and tell me a lot of the things that you learn as a teenager because plenty of the mistakes that they made, they could have avoided. All right, we're gonna. Um, um, I have your book right here in my hand. You gave it to me. Thank you. You're um, <laughs> let's get on some of the introduction. Is that starting with the entrepreneurial journey, the discovery yeah. about me? Okay, we about me. So about me, you get a little bit of my family and growing up and, yes. and those things. The contractor. Yes, I I worked at about thirteen. I got a job from a contractor hooker. Ah. And the job was to go, they were building the Golden Rock Houses, the, the last phase, and he had mm -hmm. 25. And my job was to basically go to the site and take nails out of the, from the, the old wood, the old wood okay. so he could reuse them. And oh, then I had, so to, had to, I had them four pounds, you, you bend them out. and I straightened them back out, put them in a bucket, <laughs> and then I put the short two by fours oh, right. in, in, a, in a short pile, and the long ones in a long pile, and the uh -huh. plywood, the same thing. Yes. And that was like my first subcontractor job. So you wrote about the, that, so I wrote the that details, the book, and he told me something that was very valuable that I still carry with me. A job is nothing but work. If you don't want to work, don't get a job. All right, all right. <laughs> Are we going to continue with the contents of, and the introduction of this book? You have. Um, the altar boy. Altar boy. I was an altar boy in two yeah. churches, the Anglican <laughs> church and the Catholic church. Wow. So, so I talk about altar that and I talk, I talk about prayers I learn. Uh -huh. I, I still pray. I still say grace. I still have a nighttime prayer. I still have an early morning prayer. And I still do that religiously. Well, every day. Yes, exactly. And she taught us, she taught all of us those, those prayers that, right, that we right, still right. say today. Okay. I do. I think um, the mentor. The mentor is meeting the Uncle Bill. Right? Yes. About yes. the time? He taught me a very valuable lesson about time. So you know we have station time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. So he, oh, yes. he 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 taught me that that time does not exist. There is just time. Mm. And I had to meet him at three o'clock one day, and I reached there at three seventeen. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I think it was a Monday or Tuesday, and he told yeah. me, you know. When you when I saw you wasn't coming at three o'clock, I made other plans. All right. And so we had to schedule for like two days after after after. And what did that do to you? I was never late again. I'm still not late to everything. You saw I come here like a half of an hour early. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right. You spoke about um, okay. You spoke about the, the five year plan. You gave us a little yes, bit the five year plan. You yes. talk about the bullying. What the cost of living? Cost of living. So many of us doesn't understand what it costs to live. We don't understand savings. He taught me, I wanted to leave station and go. And I wasn't 18 yet. And, and he told me, well, so he broke it down for me. What does it cost? You're going to need to pay your bills once you go. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, what does it cost for you now? And I said, it doesn't cost me anything. He so said, he set you up for, 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 for the living. But what about, you say you left young. 
Yes, I, I quit school at 16 and wow. I left Stacia at 17. But you're going on your own now. You've got to cook and wash. I mean, I, I, I could have already, yes, yes, yes. I could have already cooked and washed and, and, and keep, keep a clean house and that yes. kind of stuff. Okay. But I didn't understand the cost of living. So every so month living. you have rent, you have utilities, you have groceries, you have laundry, mm -hmm. detergents, and, and you have, those things cost money. Yes. So you got to have a job. And then you have to save for in case when you don't have a job. That's true. Right? And then he told me, as you travel away... Or did you just for the following day? Exactly. He said, yes. make sure you go to a bank, a local bank, and establish a bank account. Could that establish you as a saver, which allows the bank to look at you as a future trustworthy borrower? And you know, sometimes uh, when you're going about your own, you have to cut your eyes on things. Oh, yeah. Are, are you teaching the, the young people that? Yes. Uh, they really need to they do need this that. you can't because things are more expensive now than then and know? and there's more things now yes so things you can't have the money and have the thing exactly. you must trade one for the other exactly and the more you make your kids spend their own money so instead of you buying the candy for them mm -hmm. or, or the ice cream mm -hmm. whatever whatever you give them based on their chores or birthdays or whatever uh, make them spend it themselves so they understand how quick money goes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Wow. He and, said, and, he's like a stranger. They yeah. treat it nice and stay. <laughs> you know, they still give it to the stranger nice, but if you don't treat them good, they say bye. Yes, and this is exactly. what we're going to talk about. Goodbye and hello. Goodbye and hello. That, yes. was, that, that was leaving station. So when I left station to go to St. Martin, initially, it was for two weeks. And I said goodbye to the Quill. And, you know, back in the day, you had Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie. said, I'll be back. Yes. And I said to the Quill, I'll be back. I wrote that in, in, inside the book, right. but I didn't. I didn't just stay for two weeks. I ended up spending a year and a half, almost two years in Saint Martin, and then I came back at the age of nineteen. And then we, I, I met Uncle Bale, and we sat down and we spoke a little bit, and we compared a five-year plan that I made at fifteen to where I was at nineteen. So the photo on the back of the book is where the book kind of ends. Mm -hmm. That's me at nineteen years old. All right, all right, all right. Pursuing the business. Of so so this book is one of three so this one is learning the business of life where I learned all the fundamentals and then pursuing the business of life will basically take place in St. Martin it's a difference tell us the difference between that pursuing the business of life is an adult I'm an adult and I'm doing adult things mm -hmm. I got a girlfriend I live on live by myself mm -hmm. I'm getting my heart book and I have a heartbreak story on heartbreak hill and and then I'm working I'm working a real job um, so my first job was actually at Super Burgers, flipping burgers. Wow. And my second job was the Indian store across the street. Madhu. Madhu, exactly. Yes, I remember Madhu. And then the third one <laughs> was... Yes. Yes, Madhu. And my third job was working construction with Bonifacio. All right. So those three things I did at the age of 16 in one year, and then at 17, I, I left. So I, like I said, all the fundamentals, and I used to dabble with the radio station around you way back in the day. Yes. So because I used to come by your mom to get CDs exactly for my CDs. brother yes. exactly yes. so yes. when it comes to public speaking and all of that I didn't have any professional training but I just can jump in and do it because I've seen like you I've seen Magic Luke um, and I've seen all these different personalities do it. And it's just, you know, a little bit of monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing the positive, not the negative. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Brown's wisdom, that's you, right? That's me. That's, that's me saying, now that I'm older and I know a lot more, I'm, I'm sharing those fundamentals of my life's conclusion as, you know, as I am now. And, and, uh, and it's giving you a lot of the positive traits. Right, we have the reflective insights. Reflective insights is a little bit more of elaboration on, on like, for instance, most people don't understand the 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of us achieve, we, we want to achieve 100% of what we want, but we mostly, um, we mostly accomplish 80%. And, and, and in chasing that extra 20%, we're risking the 80% we already have. And in many instances, people lose it all. All right. The, the book sounds... You're just talking about it. And it sounds exciting already. All right? Yes. So, 
Okay, I, I asked you earlier if you're selling the books and you see you with Yes, you so the know. books, my you could get the books from Emily Kuta in James. She's always on the balcony. You can get your top up, you get your SIM card, and now you get the book, Learning the Business of Life. So if they want to, to really know who Grammy who, is. Who Grammy is and where and he come from. Become. and Yes, yes. He so, used to be, but yes. he is now. No, right. right. Yeah. So, so this book. one for station people who know a lot of, a lot of the stories, but now they get the inside scoop. They get to really see what was going on behind the scenes. All right. Now that you have this book, the first one, this is your first Yeah, one? this is the first of and three. And it's published and going yes. good. What is your next? So I'm working what on is, another book. What is next? I'm what working on another, another book right now. Okay. And you can find it on my website. There's a 10-page Download for free, GrammyBrown.com. That's G R A M E Y B R O W N E dot com. And it's called Gabriel. The next book is called Gabriel. Gabriel. It's a fictional okay. Okay. book. Okay. Right. And, and and it's about a police officer who's also a priest. Mm. And, and and he's an <laughs> investigator. <laughs> I put it together nicely. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> and, you, it, it you said it have to start with Creativity, creativity and imagination. So that is what you're on that. I'm at that level. You're now. on that yes, level now. I'm at that level because my imagination is, 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 is so Just broad. Going big. And I love going to the movies. I've seen a lot of movies. I love mm -hmm. to read. So I, I can, I, and I love to tell stories. All right. So I'm basically creating a story. So he gets convicted of five murders. In Turkey, and everything takes place in Spain, oh, Barcelona, it Spain. Your brain. Yes, it takes place in <laughs> Barcelona, Spain, oh, oh. and he gets con he's accused of killing five people in Turkey. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, this this is just <laughs> a, a, a plot, yeah. Okay. And it's a country he was never in. What's the name of the guy? Gabriel. Gabriel. Well, what is so, the name Gabriel? When you read the book, you'll find out. <laughs> and that's that oh, you have to read. Yes. Yes. Like yes. All right. Yeah, so and yeah, and then yes. so so they 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 basically accuse him of that, and he was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences. Wow. wow. And and then he escapes, and he comes to the United States, and he's intercepted by the FBI, and in FBI custody, that's where the book starts. So you get the premise, the setup, and then the book starts where he starts to basically so tell the FBI what and happened. Copy of that. Yes, it's and he starts from the beginning, so that's okay. where the book, the book goes. Oh. So you get the first twelve pit pages for, for free, and then hopefully I will have this book out in June. All right. Yes. Now you're here on Station, where we say your hometown. Yes. Your yes. Hometown. Most of your years were here. Was here yeah, and you're going to the different schools. And how are the children, you know, they, because um, some of them don't know you. No, they don't, they don't know me at all. You, yes. you know, funny. You want to throw the teachers, not much. Yes. Uh, I know Lucinda because I grew up with her, yeah. um, you know, and yeah. I, you know, funny, I met Doreen because Doreen, uh, I went to school with her and our brothers are the same day. So okay. people used to say, oh, Doreen like Grammy, Grammy so like Grammy. how are the children accepting you, you know, because, you know, you, you know, this, you know, this you is, I mean, it depends on how you, 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 you come over with your presentation. Oh, just right very simple. Me laugh. So, <laughs> and, and I made them laugh because I, yes, I asked right. them. You know, you're not just so standing up there and talking. I gave pens to the kids that had the best grades okay. and the kid that is the best behaved. Right. Because I had this misbehavior in school, oh, and, right, and so, right, right. so it was very interesting to see some kids raise their hand like this, and some when you ask a question like, "Who gets the best in history?" Because I was a history buff. Okay. Some kids would just go, "Let's just the entire yeah, hand right, up there." Right, so that, yes. that was fun, and the in interaction was good. And who wants to be a, a writer, and and what they want to be when they grow up. So like all of the things that I wish. You know, that many kids would get asked, even by their parents, mm -hmm. what do you want to be? So I'm doing a project with the, the K1, K2, first and second grade, where they're going to write who they are, the grade they're in, what they want to be when they grow up, catalog it, make a book out of it, and give each student a book so they can have, and one for the school. And hopefully the school can continue with it annually. In this particular case, because the... Because the Golden Rock School, it's four grades, so every four years they can make this book. Mm -hmm. And let's say like me coming back now, 40 years after, mm -hmm. they could have gone in the archives, take this book yeah, and say, yes. let me see what Grammy said mm -hmm. when he was six years old. Mm -hmm. And then you go through the book. So this is where it starts, and I'm going to do that at no cost to the parents or teachers. 
or the school, mm -hmm. and then we go from there. So in a way, you know, you, you made them feel like this boy was he was troublesome. He was troublesome. Now look at him today. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. you think anyone of them is say, I want to be like that, like Granny. I hope so. <laughs> they, haven't told me, they haven't told me. I've met three of them that want to be writers. A couple of want to be lawyers. One wants to be a mechanic. Mm -hmm. One wants to be a professional gamer. But this was not in your... No, no. Your, no, no it, it wasn't. I, I didn't even... I think I probably wanted to be new. I wanted to be something probably by third grade or fourth grade. And now this has been challenged by kids kindergarten. And you love this. Because un un until you ask the question, you don't get an answer, That's right. right? So any any answer you want, you must ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything else you think we missed? I mean, I think we went through the contents, but maybe something I missed that you would like the, the listening. Um, you know about. one, get the book. <laughs> More naturally. Um, naturally. Two. You will find so much in there that, that as a grown-up, if you have kids, you're going to say, you know what? My kid need to know this. My kid need to learn this. I need to say this. I need to repeat this. Because kids soak up information. And you want that when they grow up, they're not hearing it or seeing it for the first time. Especially the good stuff. So if, if, if you plant that seed now in, in their air and in their, their brains, they will remember it forever. And, and even if they, they don't have it on the forefront, at some point, it's going to come in handy. They're going to use it. Because there's so many things Uncle Bill taught me that I, I can access and I can use. And, and that's what happened. I, I'm going to go back to maybe my first question. I don't even know which one was the first one. But what do you really, really want to share? I want to share my story and hope that my story inspires others. So... If, if you want to succeed in life, there's many different ways to succeed. But if you want to succeed with what your imagination is and what your dream is, it requires work, it requires dedication, persistence, commitment, and you must make the first step. Because until you make the first step, mm -hmm. you're standing still. I can't believe this day will come. Yeah. We are seniors, you know, every boy, you know. <laughs> I, this is very, 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 and I'm very honored to have you here with Thank you. this morning. I'm happy to be I'm here. I'm going to give you the last word. I mean, yes, because I have to go by this. Yes, the, the ECS, yes. Um, yeah. So, yes, so I'm going to be, yes, a lot of information is in the book. This is information that kids should know, they need to know. Parents, if you don't know it, get the book. You will learn it. You can pass it down because this is us, right? And no man is an island. You can make a nice gift too. Definitely. Yes. And we are our community. Yes. So we we have to make our community better. Yes, right. It starts with us. Yes. It starts with us. Yes. All right. So thank you so much for your time and thank you for your audience. Um, everyone that's tuning in, good morning and thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And get the book. I don't like doing you. But I'm glad and I'm happy that yes, I had the yes. opportunity to do this. It was more of a conversation. It was my interview. We were just talking. Yes, yes, yes. Talking with Granny. Yes, with your listeners. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Our very own. Can I say that? Yes, yes. Our very own. Our very own. Yes, our very own. Our very own. Calvin. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Our very own Calvin. Calvin, nice having you here. Nice and in time I come again, I'll do Jebediza's award, she'll be here. All right, there we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, ready listeners, there you have it. I hope you will do it from, and of course, support and get a book. He says from his mom.